Is this house haunted? On today's Unnamed Real Estate Podcast. This is Ray's Bitter Disappointment. Hi there. My name is Charles Ray Dawson. I'm associate broker with ProStar Realty. This is the Unnamed Real Estate Podcast, and this is episode, I believe, 39, our Halloween special. The, uh, podca- the episode that I've been looking forward to for months, because months ago, I thought, you know what I'm going to do before Halloween? I'm going to do a haunted house show. And I'm really, got really all excited, and we decided to move in the middle of this whole thing. So <clears throat> I didn't get to do all the prep work that I wanted to do and do all the research. I mean, Lord knows, I do love my, me some research. But, um, <clears throat> you know, we got the move going on. And so last night, Wednesday, I come in and I record with my brand new $200 camera. I set the resolution down so we don't get that weird pixelation that we were going on uh, last week. And thank you very much for Ron and a couple other people who pointed that out. So I re-recorded last night on Wednesday thinking because we're moving Thursday and Friday and that's when the heavy lifting is going to happen. That I'll just get this all done in the can and I can just upload on Thursday. And I got, you know, stayed late, got my recording done and just realized I'm still getting that lag and it's it's not as bad as it was before it's more of that ma- 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 max headroom and i don't like doing that so got up early this morning it is actually um eight o'clock right now while i'm recording this so yes i actually got up in the morning got into the office before eight o'clock had my whataburger you know breakfast of champions and now we're going to discuss haunted houses whether or not this house is haunted. And I'm only being halfway facetious about this because it is a question that comes up surprisingly a lot of times. Um, People will ask that question when you're showing them a house on the purchase side. And I've had sellers joke, joke on the selling side because people don't want to come sit out and say, yeah, this place haunted. Yeah. See the walls? They're not supposed to be bleeding like that. Um, But, you know, it is an issue because we've had court cases, honest to God, court cases like Stambovsky versus Ackley here, which we're going to be referencing later on. And um, so how does this affect real estate? How does this affect you in your house? How does this affect you selling your house? Um, A lot of times when... I'm showing a house to somebody and I've shown, I have shown houses in the middle of the night before walking around with flashlights and that's, that's a special little kind of creepifying, but, um, you know, people will suddenly feel uncomfortable in a room, right? And they'll call it out. Their little subconscious is triggering something going on in that room. And for a certain mindset of people, they're going to default to, I think this house is haunted. I'm like, okay, could be. I doubt it. It was only built three years ago and, uh, it's, Obviously not on an Indian burial ground or anything. Well, this is Arizona, so you have you have no idea where an Indian burial ground is. And Lord knows the state really did not pay a lot of t- attention to what they were building on back in the day. But um, you know, a lot of t- a lot of times, what I've what I found is that when an individual is f- experiencing weird feelings in a house for the first time, it has to do with tangible things they are subconsciously picking up that is manifesting as a feeling of unease with them and their brain is going to it must be satan and so if you you know when if you walk into a room and you suddenly feel wow there's something wrong going in there my the first thing you should try to do look at the corners really start breaking that room down especially in older houses it is amazing how when the houses start to settle the corners are no longer at 90 degrees and it creates a weird little effect that you actually have to look to see but you know if you ever just looked at a room went that's wrong you know that wall's wrong and it could be a whole bunch of little things because if you don't have good 90 degree corners and you were suddenly lining up your paintings and your posters and whatever pictures of your grandchildren um up against that wall all right and you can have 
the top of that picture frame perfectly level, all right, in, in parallel to the ceiling, but it might not be parallel to, you know, the side of it. And you notice these things, you know, and it's, it's like, what can they go? What's wrong with that room? What's wrong here? And when you start breaking it down like that, one of the other things that um, people notice, um, walking through the room, especially upstairs, second, especially anything on a wood flooring, you might get a little wavery effect. And in some places, you know, when if you got cracks in the slab and the slab's starting to shift up on you like that, you start getting that disorientation. My foot touching the ground is not does not feel like it is firmly and solidly, you know, touching the ground. And that tends to spin people out. The um, other things, you know, they get attributed to uh, haunted houses a lot or unusual noises. All right. The creaking of the house settling, um, especially during the course of the day as the heat, you know, or at night as the heat changes, as the temperature changes, you're going to get shifting, you're going to get settling, you're going to get, you know, creaking sounds and whatnot. So you know that is something else to really you know to look into on that when you're in and when you're going into those uncomfortable rooms um there used to be that show ghost hunters all right and the first season of ghost hunters was awesome because these guys were super skeptical they were actually two plumbers and they would go in there and you know somebody would report my house is haunted and they would go in there with a really really good skeptical mindset and they would point out ex exactly a lot of the things that i just told you um you know you hear stuff about strange smells all right uh your pea traps and if you've ever been in a hud property in the middle of september you know exactly what i'm talking about all right that's the little loop that you see all right on underneath the sink and the water sits in there and the reason why water is sitting in there is create a barrier to gas smells from the sewer system coming up into your house. You will also see that on the toilet. That's why you have that reservoir of water down there. Um, over time, if these things dry out, you can get weird and odd sulfuric, one even might say satanic smells coming from the shower that you never use or coming from the big spa bath you have next to the shower because who's got time to take a bath nowadays so um also the dream floor in your utility room so what you need to do is occasionally run the water in all your your baths and whatnot um as as a when i'm listing a house that is a consistent thing that i do if a house is going along on the market is i just go in there and pour a cup of water down all the drains uh, just to make sure those drains don't um you know dry up like that so little how to sell a house pro tip there so that's one of the things um the flickering lights 99 times out of 100 is a sign of an electrical problem All right not necessarily aunt may coming back to visit you so that's something else you want, you, you want to look into and address um the couple other you know a couple other things that come along that is you know, general age of the house. Older houses are, they have different floor plans than modern houses, right? They, they have rooms where we shouldn't have rooms. Rooms tend to be smaller and to the modern eye can make you feel uncomfortable. So am I just completely sucking the fun out of, you know, haunted houses and whatnot? Because this is Arizona. We do actually have a lot of them. Um, there is a house around the corner of me and found this out. That house was is just consistently up for sale right, we're talking like every six to nine months and um you know talking to one of the neighbors about it and you know noticed that i was, I was like that house is always for sale why is that house always for sale it actually turned out a woman was literally axe murdered in that house by her boyfriend um she neighborhood gossip goes she got divorced kicked the husband out, moved her new boyfriend in. He winds up axe murdering or chopping her in little bits and storing her in the garage in plastic bags until the neighbors discovered this spell. And that house has been turned over a billion times ever since. So does the seller of that house need to disclose that the site has been a location for a heinous axe murdering? Long time listeners. We'll know 
No, the seller does not have to volunteer that information because of Arizona stigmatized property law. Is there a chance that your buyer is going to be talking to one of the neighbors next door and find out about that? If your buyer is talking to the neighbors next door, which all buyers should do, take an opportunity to talk to neighbors while, during your inspection period, they might discover that. But as much turnover as that neighborhood, as that uh, corner of the neighborhood has got, I'm pretty sure nobody else knows that story except me and a couple other old timers. So, but um, that covers the disclosure side. We're going to get in. I really want to wrap that. Use that for my wrap up at the end of this conversation. But we have multiple haunted houses here. We have multiple houses that are on websites. Um, that ha we have a couple of hotels that are supposed to be really super haunted. Uh, if you ever go up to Jerome, you know, that entire town and is very famous on the ghost, tour on, on the ghosty tour sites. It is also has ghost tours. If you ever want to go on that same with tombstone, you know, um, Arizona, even though we've only been settled by the white man for the last couple hundred years, you know, it has a really, really rich history of, of ghosts and ghost stories. In fact, um, a friend of mine, Jim Pipkin, who is a modern day hardcore troubadour, has several songs that he's written about Arizona ghosts. And I am going to, that's going in the show notes at the bottom. This Jim is an awesome guy. Pay more attention to his music. Um, but let's, let's bring it back to buying and selling real estate. So we've, we talked about the buyer side. If you're walking it now, if you are an individual who is, you know, seriously concerned about whether or not you're buying a, a haunted house, a home inspector is not going to discover that. Right. Um, a, your real estate agent is not going to be able to tell you one way or the other. It's, um, there is no real estate agent in Arizona. Okay, that is probably qualified to tell you whether or not the house is haunted. I, there's definitely none of them here at ProStar. In fact, I double checked, all right? So, if this is something of concern to you as the buyer, of course, you need to take time, you know, take your own measures to re you to just dis discover whether or not the house is haunted. So, that happens during your inspection period. Um, this is one of the few times I get to say, I don't know who you call to do that. And if you do find somebody who can do that, please let me know. I would love to include them in my Rolodex in case this situation comes up with me. Um, I think we've covered most of the things that could make you feel uncomfortable going into the house and the non-metaphysical ways that that happens. But um, I do know that there's at least one person around here is happy to do a cleansing for you. That's coming where they come in, they burn the sage and this and that and the other thing and occasionally get bounced off the walls by an 11 year old girl but you know there are people in town who are willing to do that and I think most of them will do it for a fee but if this is something that concerns you as the buyer this is something that needs to come up during the inspection period now because we do have stigmatized property law in the both the homeowners selling you the house and either it will you know, both real estates on the transaction, the buyers and the seller side are not obligated to disclose to you the presence of that has been the site of a murder or that has been the site of a death. All right, you are it is on you to do your own research. Now remember, all right, it is proven court case here in in Arizona that the seller and the two agents cannot lie to you. All right. If they have that information and you ask them, right? Um, the famous case uh, that we just had on this thing was um, had to deal with the presence of a sex offender, and that the seller was moving because of the presence of a sex offender, and the buyer had asked, "Why are you moving?" And the buyer and the seller had lied about the reason and said, "Oh, we just want to go live near friends." Right? That was that was found, all right, to be actually something they could work on. So, um. Now, if you're on the seller's side and you live in a haunted house and you feel the need to disclose that, all right, you can disclose that in the spuds, all right? Last page on there, there's a little, is there anything else that you think may materially affect the value or the, what the buyer is giving in consideration for your house? And you write down in there, this house is haunted as heck, all right? That will do you a, a world of good. Talk it over with your agent first. Right. And the main reason is, is because of this case, Strambowski versus Ackley. All right. And I'm probably saying Stambowski wrong, but 
long story short, person was selling a haunted house. Buyer came in from out of state, did not know the local, you know, myths and histories, got the house under contract, discovered the house was haunted, and tried to pull out of the contract and get the earnest money back and their deposit back. The seller sued, right, saying, no, you're not getting out of the contract. And long story short, it goes all the way up to the courts. And this is called the Ghostbusters case because they actually do quote Ghost, Ghostbusters in the middle of the uh, middle of the um, findings and everything like that. In fact, you know, I have a copy of it. That, no, no, that's Lerner and Rowe. That's the other one, or Lerner and DMH. Um, I did read um, read the 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 findings on it and everything like that, and uh, went through the whole thing. I also read the you know the, the rebuttal to it, and trying not to practice law and trying and paraphrasing a lot of it. What really screwed the seller in this case, because the seller was was found to have you know to be held responsible because. It was a haunted house because it was haunted. It was considered a haunted house by the law, in fact, because the owner had been having a lot of fun running around telling everybody her house was haunted. She had had two separate um, newspaper articles where she had been interviewed and stated to the affirmative, yes, my house is haunted. And she stated all the things that happened on her house. And she actually sent the story of her haunted house to Reader's Digest and got paid money to be interviewed to write an article in Reader's Digest. And for you guys who remember Reader's Digest, and so for those of you guys who don't, this little book came out about every, I think it was like every uh, month or so. It had just a little, bunch of little you know reads and whatnot in it. So she's actually making money on the fact that her house is haunted and she's going around professing that her house is haunted. The seller coming in, whether or not he believed that the house is actually haunted, realized that the value of the house was now different than what he thought it was going to be when he made the offer. I understand it. that's that's a really big thing that we got going on in uh you know during during disclosure and everything is that do you know something about the house right now that you didn't when you make made the offer All right this is what comes up in the expect you know the inspections when you're doing your due diligence and that's why you have the right to pull out because of inspection because i don't want to buy a house that everybody else thinks is is haunted because it is going to make it harder for me to unload it makes sense so and that's what really put the the New York Supreme Court over the edge in, in stating there is no one and they pretty much go into this there's no way you can go in there and inspect there's no way that the individual could have known that this house was haunted being from out of the town not knowing the history and the background and the, and the social standing of the house right and they found for you know in this case is the defendant well, maybe it was a plaintiff at that point you know when they, I don't know if they start switching them over at a certain point but anyways they found for the, they found for the buyer so that is the only major case out there where it's actually covering haunted houses. And it came right down to the fact that the buyer did not, or the, the seller did not disclose that they had had this history. And because this, the seller has the responsibility to disclose things that may affect the buyer's offer on it. So if you suddenly find yourself owning the neighborhood haunted house with documentation in the local newspaper and Reader's Digest. All is not lost because the backstory of Stramvowski versus Ackley was as soon as that hit the press, it was the ultimate marketing tool ever. Everybody came out of their woodwork to try to purchase this house. And ultimately what happened is this um I wish I hopefully I wish I could find the name here. Um a a person a para, a paranormal activist scientist whatever um bought the house 
right? Because he had this thing where he was buying haunted houses, right? So it actually raised the value of the house. And he, they actually eventually wound up selling it for more, much, much more than the comp suggested simply because it was haunted. So that, that wraps up, you know, that. It's, it's, it's a happy ending at the end of the day because the seller didn't have to buy the haunted house, you know, and the buyer got to turn around and sell the house for a hell of a lot more because, oh my God, some people really want to live in a haunted house. So if you are looking at listing and you're afraid that you have something going on in your basement, why not? Okay, one, why do you have a house that has a basement? This is Arizona. We only have a couple of them. Um, however, there was a house once. Let me, let, me, let me tell you about a spooky house. I call it the Hellmouth House. And the reason it is the Hellmouth House, and I really, really, really tried to find my photos that I have saved of this house because it is creepifying. It had a basement. It had a basement with a series of doors that all locked inward. And what I mean by that is the doors had locked to keep people in, not keep, keep people out. And in this dark basement with no windows, the first thing you did is you came down into a landing and there was a door to the right and you opened the door to the right and you suddenly had a window going underneath the driveway. And I know this because the driveway was that met those metal slats and you had this full window and a door going into the hollowed out space underneath. So you're looking through a window into this dug out area with this the light coming down through the metal slats with the door with the lock on the wrong way this actually in this case it was the right way if you were in underneath there you could not get out and this window and a little plastic blue do dog dish All right. that's a little weird even by hud standards that room was also the command center where all the cameras throughout the whole rest of the house all the wiring terminated right in there because right, that house had some cameras. Um, we're talking like Google level cameras. The rest of the main room had another room that you opened up. And if you look down, there was a three foot by three foot section cut out of the foundation. And then a circular pit descending into darkness. Right, that the flashlight would not reach the bottom of. Now, how cool is that? I mean, seriously, I mean, I'm like sitting here going, oh my God, this is so cool. I, I was so mystified by this hole, this mystery hole, this hell mouth in the bottom of this basement where there shouldn't be a basement because this is Arizona and everything like that. Nobody builds basements and especially not basements with little creepifying rooms underneath with the little dog dish and stuff. I went home and I got myself a length of rope <clears throat> and I got myself another camera. And I went back to this house and I tied my little length rope to the end of the camera and I turned the camera on and start, set it on record. And I lowered that sucker all the way down to the bottom of this until I felt the weight come off the rope because it, it, it touched bottom. And then I picked it up, let it spin around for a bit, and then I pulled it out. And that's how I know that this place is – this, this hole was 25 feet deep because it took me 25 feet worth of rope to hit the bottom. And then run home throw on the video and all you're seeing is this thing going descending down this well to hits the bottom and there i saw absolutely nothing there was nothing at the bottom of that well i don't know what i would have done if i had found something at the bottom of that well or i probably wound up calling the cops after i peed myself but you know it was just the weirdest thing so later on i was talking to a gentleman about that house and he's an engineer and what he explains is that this hell mouth in the bottom of this house right, at the bottom of this basement um it's actually starting to sound like an irish song at this point you know at the bottom of the dark stairs um was probably the the tube to put a radiator in for a reverse pump air conditioning system where it uses the temperature of the ground as a constant so the heat pump can function more effectively. Sort of takes the magic out of it right there, doesn't it? Still doesn't explain the little dog dish room or everything like that, but that was a super weird house. And um, that's just one of many. Right, there's the frog house. You know, seeing a house relatively late 
out in the middle of nowhere, and next thing you know, frogs start boiling up from underneath it. All right, frogs, Arizona. That's a little weird. Um, Nears when you tell sewer line had busted like that, and the frogs were living down in the septic tank. Right. So once again, nice, normal, rational answer for something that was really sort of cool. Um, science is just destroying everything cool in the world. I swear to God. So. Uh, a couple things uh, at the end of this. The uh, graphic that I had on the front was um, from a business card a friend made for me, uh, Charles Dawson, real estate agent to the paranormal, which was of uh, two things. One, I thought it would be a really, really great marketing plan for Comic-Con. And the other one is I actually had outlined in a pretty cool uh, book, a, a story I was going to write once about a real estate agent who winds up having to be a real estate agent to the paranormal. And then... About a year ago, somebody told me that Hollywood's doing that. So obviously, Hollywood is hacking my um, my script folder that I have on my computer. So no, I have not watched it. I do not want to watch it because it probably won't be as good as what I had in my head. Because what I had in my head actually was – it made proper Arizona real estate. Right? My solutions at the end of it were based on actual – how we practice Arizona real estate here. And I thought it was really clever, but like everything else, I didn't actually write it down. So that didn't happen there, but Jennifer did that business card for me. And I've, I'm really happy. I finally got a use for it. We're going to finish up with the numbers on this and then go straight to the credits. And thank you guys very much for listening to this Halloween special. If you have a ghost story, I would really like to hear it in the um, uh, comments below the, um, for some reason, the comments um, I did, I did get a comment last week in addition to what I was talking about. And um, I could see that it was there, but I couldn't actually read it. And then it eventually disappeared. I got a hold of the original, um, the person who sent it to me, he sent me that con uh, conversation. And so I don't know why YouTube does not like people posting big stuff on in the comments below. But it, if you have a, your, your own haunted house ghost story, put it down below. It could be a lot of fun. Right. You guys have a great week and happy Halloween. Wear bright clothing. Make sure you carry a flashlight. All right. Don't take candy from strangers. All right. Unless your mom's there saying, no, this is just your Uncle Charlie. All right. Thank you guys very much. Have a great weekend. And now for the numbers. Numbers for October 27th, uh, 2021. Our actives this week are 7,446, which is down 104. First drop we've seen in a couple weeks. Of that, 2,335 are new listings, which is down 117 from the week prior. Our pendings are at 2019. Our under contracts looking for backups are 1,128, up 28. Our contracts with buyers contingency are at 103, down 19. Closings uh, for last week were 2,095, down 202. And coming soon to an MLS near you is 818 new listings. <laughs>